Israelization, which means the state of Israel will continue controlling, annexing, unifying the city according to the Israeli system. Politicians in Israel realize that they cannot do everything all the time. There are pressures from the world. So every window of opportunity, they want to uh, take the advantages and to, to build. Over the years, Israel has used many tactics to make way for Jewish construction. According to data from the Palestinian Information Center, since the beginning of 2000, Israel has demolished almost 1,000 Palestinian homes and displaced over 5,700 individuals, among them over 3,000 children in occupied East Jerusalem, Al Quds. The Palestinians in East Jerusalem have paid an enormous price trying to safeguard little of what is left of their homeland. You are talking about a prison culture. You cannot move, you cannot build, you cannot eat, you cannot do anything without Israeli license or permission. Israel is full military control of the city. Israel also controls the planning and zoning of East Jerusalem, Al Quds. It is nearly impossible for a Palestinian to receive a license to build in East Jerusalem. To get a permit really is, is, is a via de la Rosa for, for the Palestinians. It's very hard. And on top of that, even if they have all the documents and all the proofs, and even if the purpose of the land is for uh, housing, at the end of the day, they would have to pay huge amounts of money to get that permit. Because Israel makes it difficult for Palestinians to receive permits to build homes, many Palestinian families in East Jerusalem are forced to live in small, cooped-up apartments. Thousands of Palestinians live in the crowded neighborhood of Al Silwan in East Jerusalem, Al Quds. Right in the middle of Al Silwan is an Israeli settlement. Many of the homes around me are in threat of being demolished in order for more settlements to be built. As settlements are internationally condemned, Israel believes it is their right to build colonies on Palestinian land. Why is it a problem to build in neighborhoods when there's an understanding internationally that these neighborhoods will in any way be part of Israel in a peace agreement? The Israeli today are living on a different planet they don't know what's really happening. The Rajabi family lives right next door to the Jewish settlement in Al Salwan. Their tiny apartment accommodates 13 people, including nine children. Every day they live in constant fear. Our situation is very terrifying. Right next door are settlers. The settlers and the soldiers have broken into our home many times. I'm always scared for my siblings, especially the young ones. I'm scared for my cousins and for every man outside this neighborhood. Before the settlement was built almost eight years ago, the children used to play outside. Since then, their playground has been their small living room. To protect their safety from Jewish settlers, the Rajabi family has placed surveillance cameras around their home. Before the police, the soldiers and settlers, we used to go outside and play. We used to feel safe. But now, with the soldiers and settlers, we are scared to go outside. My sister and I were both hit by molotovs by the settlers. Every time I step outside, the settlers harass me. I can't go out and play with my friends. We are trapped in our house. Because of the constant violence the Rajabi family faces every day, they wish their family could leave Al Silwan. But Jamaila knows that it is nearly impossible for her family to do so. I wish I could leave my house. The settlers are trying to evict us and even want to demolish this home. But how could we live? It's so hard to get a permit to build a home. The Rajabi family says if they had any other options, they would leave Al Silwan. 
but for now, they know their situation is nearly hopeless. The overcrowded Palestinian neighborhoods and the difficulty to receive a permit to build a home on Palestinian land has moved hundreds of Palestinians towards a new trend. Buying and renting in Israeli settlements such as this one, the French Hill in East Jerusalem, Al Quds. Palestinians say it is their right to buy or rent on land that has always belonged to them. In order to show the Israelis, okay, you are not allowing me for a license to build, you are controlling me in my limited territory, which is now 14% of the city of Jerusalem. I will try to lease an apartment or buy an apartment in one of these colonies in Jerusalem, because after all, we believe this is a Palestinian land. The Abu Abdo family has been living in an East Jerusalem Al Quds settlement since 1952 to protect their safety from the Israeli authorities and Jewish extremists. Press TV has blurred Muhammad Abu Al Abdo's face and changed his real name. Muhammad says the settlement they live in has always belonged to the villagers of Lifta. So the decision was taken in 1952 to move here. And uh, originally here it was only the Hebrew University, parts of the Hebrew University and Hadassah Hospital and it was protected uh, only by 30, according to that time, 30 policemen, actually they were soldiers. Uh, it was an agreement, a United Nations agreement between the Jordanian and the Israeli government. And uh, after the 1967 war they took all over control of the area. Mohammed says the harsh situation of the Israeli occupation in East Jerusalem, Al Quds, has moved hundreds of Palestinian families like his to live in settlements. Things goes like this, you know, like uh, driving people crazy to get permissions to build a house, uh, all this stuff. So logically, it's much more easier for Jerusalem to go on and rent a house, a new house, a brand new house in a settlement than costing him seven or eight or nine, ten years even sometimes to wait for a permission to build a house. Over 80 Palestinian families reside in the settlement Muhammad's family lives in. The lack of homes and the lack of land in East Jerusalem is driving this trend to grow among Palestinians. The situation is that since Israel put a fence around East Jerusalem, actually choking the Palestinian uh, neighborhoods from the one hand. And on the other hand, not giving any planning or any approval for legal building in East Jerusalem for Palestinians. The Palestinians have no choice. They need the place to live. They have no options in the Palestinian neighborhoods in East Jerusalem because of so many reasons. All of them almost are related to the policy, to the discriminatory policy uh, uh, of the Israeli government. And therefore, they go to the uh, settlements that are being built or have been built anyway on Palestinian lands. Since 1967, the hundreds of Palestinian families live in three main Israeli settlements in East Jerusalem Pisgat Siev, Nevi Ya'ub, and the French Hill, all of which are near Palestinian neighborhoods and the old city of Jerusalem, Al Quds. As the trend for Palestinians to buy and rent in Israeli settlements continues to grow, Palestinians say this is a strategy to place a mark on the ground on the land that was once stolen from them. Palestinians say this land belongs to them and this land will be part of Jerusalem in a future Palestinian state. Recently, Palestinians have gained international recognition of a future Palestinian statehood. More than 100 countries globally recognize a free and independent Palestinian statehood along the 1967 border, which includes East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza. You went for Iraq, you went for Afghanistan, and yet Palestine has not been put on the map. I think it is time we put Palestine on the map. Many Palestinians say when they are granted statehood, the half a million Jewish settlers in East Jerusalem, Al Quds, and the West Bank must be transferred to Israel. Israelis has to go. 
Israeli colonies are not allowed to stay on a Palestinian territory. We made a historical concession by recognizing Israel on 78% of Palestine. Settlements are illegal, are obstacle to peace, are not accepted, are unethical, and they are colonizing your country. How can you live with colonies? This is madness. Currently, Palestinians continue to witness massive settlement projects in all of the Palestinian occupied territories. The Palestinians have vowed not to return to peace talks with Israel until all settlement activity comes to a complete halt. There's no point in continuing the negotiations with settlement activities uh, <coughs> running unhindered in parallel. Those against. Recently, the United States vetoed a United Nations resolution condemning Israeli settlement activity in all of the Palestinian occupied territories. This has triggered many Palestinians to declare peace talks with the Israelis dead and buried. However, Palestinian authorities say their plans are on full course for a declared state of Palestine in the near future. Palestinian statehood uh, is achievable and will be achieved. We will have our state surely, you know, there is no other choice. Today people are not waiting for Salah ad -Din. People are not waiting for Mandela, Palestinian Mandela. People are not waiting for a Algerian revolution by uh, the youth of Algeria. People are waiting to awaken the Israelis. You cannot have it both ways. We are here to stay. As settlements continue to move in on Palestinian land, Palestinians say they will not leave in order for Israel to continue colonizing the small friction of the land that remains for them. Every day is a struggle for the average Palestinian. The average Palestinian represents those who live in crowded neighborhoods surrounded by Israeli settlements. The average Palestinian also represents those who have had their homes demolished, who have been evicted in order for more settlements to occupy their land. But the average Palestinian also represents those who hope and wait for a free and independent statehood. I hope you enjoyed this edition of In Focus. See you next time.